Hello, and welcome to Behind the Horror. Scary movie fans, such as myself, will hear that a movie is based on a true story. A few of them we already know, but most, well, we never go on to find out just what that true story is. So, in this series, we will explore and find out exactly what the true story is behind the movies we love. And folks, this one's a bit of a short one, but I think you'll find it interesting. The 2005 movie, Hard Candy, starts us off with an obvious online chat where the username Lensman319 is chatting with Thong Girl 14 online. They are discussing how they could and should possibly meet up. Then we cut to a teenage girl eating some kind of chocolate dessert in a coffee shop. And this is when we meet 14 year old Haley, played by actress Ellen Page, and she is epic. She turns chocolate still smeared on her innocent plump little bottom lip and she acknowledges Jeff who reaches forward and seductively wipes the chocolate off of her bottom lip then he licks it off of his thumb looking at her seductively and excitedly they begin to chat and Jeff who is a photographer is trying to be all smooth and then you start to get that uncomfortable feeling that he's flirting with her it sort of dawns on you oh this is where we're going it becomes painfully obvious that these two were chatting online before we find out that Haley isn't even in high school yet so she's a junior high girl as Jeff finishes off her piece of cake, there is an obvious camera shot of a missing girl poster above their heads for a girl named Donna Maurer. The girl looks like she would definitely be under 18 years old. The movie definitely wants the viewer to notice this poster. So Jeff tells Haley about how mature she is for her age both in how she acts and how she looks. We see that Haley asks if they could go back to Jeff's place, and he, of course, agrees. I mean, isn't that what he's there for? They are smiling at each other coyly, and she gets into his car, and they begin to travel to his house. The scene where they are in the car cuts to a slow motion section where they give you the idea that the drive is taking a while and that they are innocently chatting away with each other and it's all fun and games, both being excited. And then they arrive at Jeff's house. There are strange pictures on the walls like a very young, possibly 11 to 12 year old girl in a ballet outfit. Another photo of what appears to be a teenage blonde girl out in nature and yet another one that I can't quite make out but certainly looks like a young girl sitting maybe on the edge of a bed facing a window with blinds covering it but I can't be sure about that one. But make no mistake his house is very Jeffrey Epstein in his choice of art. You know, Jeff goes on and he makes them a couple of drinks and he attempts to give Haley one, but she smartly brings up and talks about the fact that he could have drugged her drink and she offers to make the drinks herself. So he allows that. He then takes her through his home and into his photography studio where they are chatting over their beverages. Jeff drinks his and Haley makes him another to which he drinks all of that one as well. It is at this point that Jeff admits that he has slept with an underage girl before, though we are already aware, well aware at this point that he is a pedophile, or rather a hebophile, meaning he is sexually attracted to girls from very early puberty through their mid-teen years. So this is typically between the ages of 11 to 14. So Haley says that she would like to model for him, right? So she goes over and picks some music to put in this little stereo that he has. 
she starts dancing around she takes her hoodie off she's got like a sports bra on and you can see her bare stomach she's dancing having a good time but Jeff seems disoriented and then he kind of orders her to sit down but then he falls to the floor unconscious we then cut to a new scene where he is tied to a chair as Haley walks past him kind of angrily removing a head covering what happens next well those of us that have seen it know and the rest well you'll have to watch to find out but it is a good movie it's Ellen Page I recommend it it comes from a unique perspective now this movie is based on true real-life events while we all know this is something that is going on all over the world and is heavily in the news these days let's take a trip to Tokyo Japan which is where the story for this particular movie got its plot from so in Japan there is an activity called quote walking dates and it is basically schoolgirls that are recruited to go on these walking dates with adult men then they are basically nearly forced into prostitution while still being young teenagers a vice correspondent named Simon Ostrovsky went to Tokyo to investigate where he was able to interview a female victim of such a practice this was all for the vice news's short documentary quote schoolgirls for sale in Japan unquote underage girls for the right price can be rented for a number of different services such as fortune telling walking with clients massages and then it goes on from there these encounters are known as Joshiko say o sampo or high school walking dates this is the front used for underage prostitution and the pimps are always lurking nearby one 16 year old girl who was having some troubles at home got a job just an innocent job handing out flyers to people not knowing at that time that this was the beginning of her recruitment process you see the girls were just innocently handing out these flyers right while potential customers would anonymously drive by to see and evaluate the potential goods if you will from there they are asked to go on these walks with adult men for money and nothing more if the girls are favored and they are open to that it then begins to take a very dark turn one girl admitted that her walking dates quickly turned into men giving her money for sex while she was still a high schooler the money of course would then be given to their bosses or what we know as pimps and conveniently these girls didn't have to dress up because their school uniform was all that was needed plaid skirt knee socks and so on they are wearing the very clothes they wore to school just hours before the new girls also hold up signs that have you know written on them offerings for chats or fortune telling 30 minutes for 3,000 yen which is roughly $27 in US money an hour costs 6,000 yen or nearly $56 the signs say according to the picture I saw they say cafe and JK the JK meaning schoolgirl walks and there are also apparently a lot of schoolgirl bands who aren't famous by any means but much older men pay money to go to these venues to watch these young girls perform in school uniforms and they know all of the lyrics to all of the songs girls it's very underground the men can also pay money to meet the girls after the shows there is a whole Japanese schoolgirl culture that started in the 1990s and older men seeking out the company of underage girls has since then become more and more common 
But this behavior has not gone unnoticed. Last year, these, quote, walking dates was flagged by the U.S. State Department's annual report on human trafficking as fronts for commercial sex run by a criminal network. But an American journalist named Jake Edelstein, who reports on crime in Japan, has stated that it isn't just one single network. This is across the spectrum from many criminals. Now, Japan is a developed country and they have agreed to be against human trafficking as they are members of the United Nations. But it would appear that this is going on within sight of police buildings down on the streets below. And remember that, unfortunately, Japan is pretty known for its shame-based culture. So these teen girls who wind up getting forced into prostitution are forced to stay silent rather than reach out for help. But never fear, there are advocates out there working to help these girls get off the streets. They patrol the streets at night and they find them handing out flyers or holding up their little signs and they help them. Other girls who don't get help in time wind up getting lost in the business or even committing suicide. And yet, as the movie is based on, there are girls that are exacting their revenge. There was an episode of 2020 about Japanese schoolgirls who were luring rich businessmen into, quote, honey traps, then beating them and robbing them. So a honey trap is basically a term used to describe irresistible bait used to lure a victim. It is the practice involving the use of romantic or sexual relationships for interpersonal, political, or monetary purposes. In our instance, a girl makes contact with an individual who wants to pay for her company or quote, services of one of these young girls and they entice them with promises of whatever the client is wanting to pay for. They lure them to a specific spot, area, apartment, what have you. Then they, usually with the help of someone waiting at the location, beat the man up and rob him. Simple as that. So the prey becomes the predator. In an article from the South China Morning Post, it states that executives and engineers at some of Japan's largest high-tech companies have been, quote, ensnared in a honey trap, unquote, set by Chinese women working at a hostess bar. Officials and employees of at least five leading companies were patrons of the club before the club shut down in June, and then the manager disappeared. The bar apparently charged an entry fee of 20,000 yen, which is like $187, and had about eight employed hostesses who, quote, poured drinks and flattered egos, unquote. The former manager, when they found him, admitted that the hostesses were available to meet the men at later dates. They didn't immediately say if the hostesses were underage or not in this specific circumstance. There was also another rather public case a couple of years ago coming out of Japan where a young female from a pop singing group was invited to a 46-year-old finance minister's home and the young girl states that the man kissed her against her will. She and some of her high school friends were invited to his house, but over there, things are different. This girl, the victim, was called out and shamed online, with most people saying, quote, the high school girl's real aim was money and breaking Tokyo apart, unquote. So, murder family, it's no shock to me or anyone else I would think that some of these girls go out on their own to seek justice. And it is also my opinion and mine alone that these men seeking out underage, disadvantaged, or at-risk girls for sexual 
deviancy, desires, what have you, deserve exactly what they get. Perhaps if the local authorities will not help them, well, then they're just trying to help themselves. Thanks for listening. <laughs>